Welcome to retouchcreative.com. Thank you for visiting our website. Make sure to check back often. We will be updating it with new videos on a regular basis. In this video, we will talk about some of the basic functions and layout of Photoshop and uh, about the retouching tools as they are used in the post-production. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the uh, features of uh, Photoshop as it relates uh, to retouching. Uh, for instance, under File, uh, you can see all the familiar options such as you can create a new document and you can save these. Also if you see here the save for web and devices option you can use this if you need to optimize your um, uh, images while saving for web use. But the thing I want to talk about here is the batch function under automate. With batch function you can apply a s the same effect to a number of images and the process is automated using the batch function. For instance if you have hundred images that you need to resize uh, with the same specifications. You can create an action, a Photoshop action, and using the batch tool and a Photoshop action, you can uh, uh, make Photoshop apply the same effect to all these photos automatically instead of uh, trying to manually uh, resize them all at, uh, by yourself. So this is a great handy tool. We're not going to get into the details of how it functions, but know that it's there. You can uh, read up on it in uh, Photoshop's help or experiment with it yourself. And uh, let's go ahead because another thing that I want to talk about is the fill and stroke. How anytime you have a selection made in your image, I just created a selection using the uh, rectangular marquee tool over here. But even if you have a custom selection that you created around the model, really any kind of selection you can use the fill tool let's go ahead and click on it and you can choose any color in this uh, drop down menu if you select color you can pick a color let's pick red and you can fill your selections this way as you can see this is very handy also when you have a selection you can go under edit to the stroke and what stroke does is already a green color selected here and if we say enter 50 pixels for width and also down at the location you can select if you want to make this stroke inside at the center or outside of your selection let's go ahead and select inside and if you click OK as you can see a green line is drawn uh, which is exactly 50 pixels in width in the inside of the selection you could have had it uh, in the center or at the outside so this is another great way of uh, controlling um, color drawing and filling with uh, selections. Another thing, <coughs> excuse me. Another thing I like to talk about is transform. If uh, let's say we're gonna fill the selection, let's go ahead and fill it, and we like to transform this uh, this uh, rectangle of red and uh, we will talk about layers later but as you can see I have this red uh, rectangle in a new layer and I'm going to go ahead and select transform and as you can see there is the scale once you activate it you can scale any object not only uh, you know just basic rectangles but you can use it to resize anything also under over there there is rotate and many other uh, transform functions. This sort is very useful because you can actually select the edges and uh, create different shapes that way. Another another uh, cool option is the warp. You can warp you if you use the warp transformation you can truly distort the elements of your image and you can really create any uh, shape desirable as you can see okay well, there's also a freeform transformation which you can activate with control T which is pretty handy also there's the define pattern uh, and I'd like to talk about this at a separate section uh, in on uh, when I'm teaching you how to create custom brushes and custom patterns that you can use so let's move on for now under the image the image adjustments uh, the image adjustments you can you should just experiment with them as you can see brightness and contrast 
we'll uh, change the brightness and contrast of the image also uh, curves will give you a more more um, flexible control over the brightness and uh, contrast you can add as many points as you like also you can work on red green and or blue channel or all of them at once if you like we're not going to talk about each and every one of them individually, but another um, tool that uh, we use in retouching a lot is the hue and saturation. By using, uh, if you take a look at the hue and saturation menu, there's the hue slider, which you can use to change the entire color range, or, or the saturation to desaturate or oversaturate an image, and the lightness, which we use in our videos. So this is this is a really handy tool to be able to. Uh, manipulate the colors. Also under image size you can resize an image. Uh, we will talk about layers uh, in a completely separate chapter so uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Uh, select Under select there is uh, the transform selection option that I like to talk about. So let's say that we have a selection made and as you can see if I make a selection and I try to just move this with the regular move tool using the Photoshop's move tool we are at, the Photoshop is actually affecting the entire image so but what if if you make a selection and you would like to only modify the selection itself meaning the actual uh, not the areas of the selection but the selection itself then you go to select and select the uh, transform selection option then if you say resize you can actually resize your selection box itself and uh, once you're done you can actually uh, you know start modifying your image so this is good if you ever find yourself thinking oh I made a selection but I wish I could make it bigger or smaller just know that there's a transform selection option under select down here under filters, um, there are many effects you can use. The blur, for instance, blur effects are cool. Gaussian blur will give you uh, a nice blur effect. We're not going to talk about each and every one in detail, but the best way to learn about filters is to just open an image and just experiment with it. It's fun. Uh, another thing is under view, there are rulers. If you click on it, if it's unchecked uh, in your uh, Photoshop, if you click on it, the rulers will appear on the top and left side of your uh, Photoshop window. And you can click on these uh, rulers and click drag down these guides. As you can see, you can bring in as many as you like. You can also bring from the left side as well. And these guides will actually help you when you need to do some precise editing. Also under view, you can, uh, if you have the snap option selected, then like your, let's say you want to make a selection, then your selections will actually snap to these lines. Or when you're doing movements of different objects, they will actually snap at these corners and these lines, so you get precise movements. Also under the view uh, menu, uh, these extras, if it's selected, the guides will show and if the extras is deselected the guides will not be visible so uh, you can say, say that uh, your workspace is getting too cluttered with guides you can just activate and deactivate them just like that you can also make rulers visible and invisible the same way also another important thing is under the window uh, you can bring in uh, different uh, different menus like for instance here I have the history panel and the layers panel which I use the most uh, but you can customize these down here under the window you can make them disappear let's just say if I don't need the history panel no more if I these uh, cl that cl get that click uh, click on that and it will disappear and whenever I need it again I can always click and bring it back so this way if you want to customize your panels to the right side of the, your workspace you can use the window and you can uh, do that.